All right, so at the start of our code, it begins with a introduction uh, message box. And basically it just gives background information on why CO2 is relevant, how it affects the world, what's the long-term and short-term effects it will have on the concentration if it's, of, if it's concentration in the atmosphere and ocean is allowed to keep rising. But also the secret uh, MATLAB trick that we used is basically it takes a long time for all the data and everything to load in. So we get to distract the user with a nice text box while everything's loading in so that they don't have to just sit around and wait for the stuff to load in, they get something to do instead. All right, cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the data sets that we used. All right, so uh, the CCS database, uh, basically that contains a carbon capture and storage database from a bunch of different plants around the world. Uh, these right here, FLR, agroforestry, natural regeneration, removal factors of planet species. These four data sets are coming from an article uh, we'll tell you at the end of the video. Uh, basically, these are carbon sequestration data from, uh, from plant organisms. And then uh, World Cities Database basically just has latitude and longitude of different cities around the world and global CO2 yearly shows uh, the average concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere over the years from zero to 2014. And then lastly, uh, we have one last data set, the GMTED 2010. It's a DEM digital elevation model uh, that we use to plot uh, the map. All right, so then once we click OK, we dismiss this message box and it brings up the main menu for our program. So the next thing we wanna do is learn about the atmospheric concentration of CO2 and how it's changed over time. The code will output a graph of the years in AD versus the CO2 concentration over time. There's an indicator where the industrial revolution begins on the map. This is because after the beginning, the CO2 concentration drastically increases, and so that was a significant point in our time. All right, the next thing is we can look at how carbon dioxide has affected the, uh, or how it will affect the ocean level rise. So I can click this, uh, it gives the user an option to select if you'd like to view a current map or a map with uh, dynamic coastlines. So first we'll just look at the current map and see how it looks. This looks normal. Uh, we have our top 50 most populated cities represented by black dots. All right, and then we can select to view a different map with different coastlines. And so basically what we have here is if all the ice on the earth was to melt, we would see a predicted rise of 65 meters from the ocean. So we can actually input that into the code and we could see actually what that looks like. Um, and if you really wanted to, we could also zoom into specific cities like, um, like Miami, which will surely be gone. And actually this black dot right here represents Houston. Uh, so Houston has an elevation of about 32 meters. So if, if a 65 meter ocean level rise was to happen, uh, then then we don't have a home no more. All right, so now let's move on to the next part where we can learn about sequestration capabilities of forest ecosystems. All right, so basically um, the, the growing of agriculture and um, trees and well, biomass uh, takes carbon out of the atmosphere because, I mean, that's part of their process of living. They take in CO2. So we can look at entire continents and see their removal rates. And basically removal rates are split into two sections from zero to 20 years of growth of, of biomass and then 20 to 60 years of growth of biomass. And so if we go into geographic region, it will let you choose any of the continents and then also gives you a little message box giving some uh, background on basically what I just said. And 
we chose a Asia and Oceania, and it gives you the um, in the first 20 years of growth, 11.1 tons of CO2 per hectare or per year will be removed. And then in the 20 to 60, it's going to go down to 10.4 because as trees get bigger and growth gets larger, it doesn't, they don't require as much because they're not growing. Their grow, growth rate isn't quite as much. So then also we can go to each individual species of trees. If we go back in. Then we get our plant species and it just gives us the removal rate for each type of plant or each type of uh, tree, I mean, and it just gives you the removal rate. It's about, it's kind of an average removal rate, depending on which region we kind of average them out. And yeah, that's pretty much we, it, it's nice to know because different, like knowing which tree has the most removal rate might be beneficial to like know which trees to plant if we're purposely planting for carbon sequestration. And so then we go on to the next. Sequestration technologies. Okay, <laughs> sequestration technologies. So um, we can decide what kind of sequestration technology we wanna learn about. At first, uh, we can decide between pre-combustion and post-combustion. From I wanna choose pre-combustion and so from there, we will have another option of choosing from gasification or oxy-fuel combustion. And so I wanna choose gasification. And so now you will see a formatted output, uh, a formatted fact sheet output um, that just explains um, the basics of the technology and how it works. So we can also run it again, and it asks if we wanna learn about another technology, we can say yes. And now let's choose post-combustion. And so now I want to choose solvents. Again, you, you have a, um, a, a few answer choices that you can choose from. I chose solvents. And from there, again, you'll see a formatted fact sheet with information regarding this technology. So not all of these technologies are practiced yet. Uh, if we look at the sequestration technologies, only uh, two or so of those are actually in wide practice. Uh, mainly what we see is uh, solvents is the most popular. They use uh, ammonia or amines uh, to sequester the CO2. Um, and so this sequestration, sequestration technologies is more uh, like future technologies and what's kind of been developed in the lab, but not quite at an industrial scale. But if we wanted to look at what's actually going on, we can learn about actual plants that do sequester CO2. All right, we have this uh, drop down list that we can choose one from and basically a formatted output uh, is made for us, gives us some information about the plant, um, gives us a web page to look for, uh, for more information. I could select another one, and uh, if the unit is uh, metric tons per day, then another thing that our program is gonna do is we're gonna look at the days that the plant has been in operation, comparing that start date with our current date, and we can actually calculate the total CO2 removed uh, for each plant. Um, in conclusion, the concentration of CO2 gas in the environment has increased exponentially over the past several decades, so the world is in dire need of a solution. Carbon, carbon sequestration may be the answer that the world has been looking for. It plays an important role in environmental chemistry and is a means of extracting the stable and persistent CO2 gas from the air. Um, this application as a whole allows insight to active and inactive plant data, plant size, capture amount, and the type of technologies used for capturing CO2. The amounts of CO2 captured at each location will also be output.